right now on Full Custom Garage, Master Metal Man Ian Roussel continues the transformation of his wild show car. I had a t-shirt when I was like 15. It said, normal is boring. This car, it's got to follow suit. Sky's the limit. Ian gets some help from an old friend, and the ideas keep flowing. It started with Johnny Jalopy, continued with Eric, and now Mark's here. So it is all about the collaboration. I brought you some stuff. Cool. Is he going to like it? Is he not going to like it? Whoa. That thing is nuts. With the car taking shape, Ian heads out on the hunt for parts. I'm building a Roth-style bubble top. Now that you mention that the bubble top, uh, let me show you something. He's like, you got to come inside. This thing is like a snapshot of heaven. Back in the shop, things don't go as planned. Stepping back and looking at the car, it's just not good. There's something terribly wrong. He's got his vision, he's got the drawing to consider, but if it's not aesthetically the way he wants, then it's not gonna happen. There's one final element that's gonna seal the deal. People start to wonder, how the heck did that happen? This thing all started when I decided to redesign my first show car, Space Junkie. I called in Johnny to help me with the new design. <laughs> You're not satisfied with I'm that. not satisfied. <laughs> it's got to be different. We based the concept off a few of the parts I had, and Johnny came up with a really killer sketch. That's what we're building. Awesome. With that as a guide, I called in my friend Eric to help with the fabrication. He had some really good ideas and helped me to modify the body to fit the drawing. After Eric left, I finished working on the rear fin details. I wanted them to be dimensional and carry the circular hole theme from the front right through to the back. Everything that Eric and I established with the sheet metal so far is cool, but we stopped on the rear portion. So in thinking about a radiator, I wanted something really exotic. I went to the local spaceship supply and there was a, uh, it was actually a crash landed UFO. Some of the parts you could see were bent up in the impact. I'm telling the truth. This came from a store that has actual spaceships. It has satellites, rocket engines, the whole deal. When I saw this, I was thinking heat sink, like on anything, anything like a radiator. The idea is air is blowing over some kind of fins to cool it. I definitely want to segment it, somehow fit it up to the rear of the car, but the first order of business is to cut it up. I got this whole assembly simply for these three shapes. You'll see it's like a flexible bellows shape. And I think stainless steel polished up to look real nice. I just got to figure out how I'm going to put them in the car. The whole thing with this is that it, it's a representation of a radiator. It's going to move coolant through it. I don't know how efficient it'll be, but the bottom line is it's got to look really awesome. So I just want to mock this up on the back of the car. It won't be tie wired in place in the end, but you can see that's pretty groovy. They're already starting to look like a spaceship. The thing is, right now you're just seeing these three pieces, but there's going to be a lot of cool tubes coming in and out of the thing. So something will be coming through here into that, and it's going to turn the corner. It's going to turn the corner, and then go back out of the car. So it's going to be like a whole crazy straw thing going on. Awesome. So I'll frame it out somehow, definitely put a fan in it, but I think I have to build this before I can finish the sheet metal on the back of the car. So that's the thing. I got these tubes on order. My friend Mark says he's on his way. Mark's a long-term client. He's a total car nut. He heard that I was making another of Johnny's drawings come to life, and he said he had to be a part of it. Yeah, Johnny sent me a photo, so I got it on my phone, and he told me you're building something else, so I, one, I had to come and see. Johnny Jalopy, Ian and myself collaborated on a build. It all came from a drawing which I stumbled across on Facebook, and it was drawn by Johnny Jalopy, fell in love with it, sent the drawing to Ian, basically said, would you be interested in building this? And of course, Ian's a uh, man of few words, his response was, yep. So this is the next one, but I'm keeping this one. <laughs> I guess, this is awesome. It's looking like the picture. Ian's done so much for me with my cars and my builds that I had to give back, right? It's it's car for Ian and I want to be a part of it for him. So you can see, this goes on like so. Awesome. Oh, I like it. I like it. Johnny's been sneaking me pictures of what's going on with the build, and uh, I gotta say, it's like anything that Ian builds. Uh, the pictures don't do it any justice. You have to see it. 
I mean, I, I heard you were building this thing, and you know, like I said, I came here to give you a hand on this, and I brought you some stuff. Cool. I was surprised Mark said he brought something, but I'm open to everybody contributing to the project. It's like a potluck, potluck dinner. Sure, everybody put, it, brings put it in the pot, stir it up, <laughs> and see what it. comes out. Exactly that. Well, I'll go get it for you. Mark said he brought a surprise to help with the build, so I was curious to see what it was. He starts rolling in this thing, and I uncover it. Oh, it's a small block Chevy. Ian was pleasantly surprised because it's a V8. I mean, granted, it, it's not the prettiest thing you've ever seen. You know, it's uh, kind of black and a little grungy, whatever. I mean, all, all we did was kind of pressure wash it off, got the grease off of it, whatever. But it's a strong running motor. I mean, if you look at the drawing, it's got the exhaust stacks coming out both sides. So the car needs a V8. <laughs> he's concerned. What are you so concerned about? Do I got to give you the pep talk? Well, we do a bit of quality control here, and the dog is giving me kind of the eyes. So he gives it the sniff test. He's smelling the distributor. He's checking the oil. Transmission. What do you think? It's going to be all right? He approves. No? Uh-oh. Hold on. Something with the transmission. Uh -oh. Like, mm -mm. remember what happened last time? I'm like, I know. On the last project I worked with Mark, he brought down an engine that had some hidden issues. I'm a little leery about this one, so I wanted to take a look inside. You know what happened last time. I looked in the valve covers and... Don't look in there. Oh, look, it's nice. And it's super clean, so this was a, a well-cared-for engine. Okay, well, I got a new starter on it, so it was a running thing. <laughs> they told me it was running, so... It ran great. Don't shoot the messenger, I'm just a delivery guy. I heard guy. that before. I have to prove it to Ian that, yeah, this thing works. Otherwise, you know, I'm just, I'm never gonna save face with him ever again. So we're gonna mock it up into the space junkie. Put it in the car and I could tell this is what it needed. That's the look, man. I think you're all right. You definitely, huh? you got an eye for this, man. Look at that. Huh? That's oh, freaking see, perfect. It had to have a V8. Yeah. It's got the look he wants, it's got the stance he wants, and Ian will paint it up and it'll look like a million dollars on the outside. I'm looking at the frame rails and the way that the exhaust ports are coming out. It's going to look very much like the drawing, which is what we're going for. Straight 8 would have never have gave us this look. I do have another piece that kind of tops it off. But wait, there's more. There's more. Yeah, I surprised him pretty good with the engine. But you know what? That's, that's not the big piece that's really going to surprise him. I, I brought something else along. Ian's the creative master. And this is just sort of what I've done for him. And, and I'm hoping that he likes it, you know. So I got a bit of butterflies in my stomach going, is he going to like it? Is he not going to like it, you know? Mark walks in with what looks like a pillow, I think, you know. What, what is this? He's got sea cushions or what? <laughs> gas tank? It was a gas tank. Oh. But now. Whoa. This is your what? air cleaner. Oh, yeah, just like his drawing, man. That thing is nuts. I guess it's a motorcycle gas tank that he has taken the time to modify to look like Johnny's artwork. It's a big shell that has this mohawk detail on it and a bunch of cool vents. I could see he spent some time. It's just what it needed. I'm glad you like it and you can use it. I really like the fact that Mark made this, and just like the rest of the car, it's going to get refined and evolved as it progresses. Now it's starting to look like a spaceship. So you got your radiator thing, you have yeah. two mohawks, you have the air cleaner. I could see it already. The great thing about this project is it started with Johnny Jalopy, continued with Eric, and now Mark's here. So it is all about the collaboration. Meeting of the minds, this thing's going to be way better for it. So Mark's little V8 adventure got me thinking we needed a really cool exhaust. So I went and I got eight of these megaphones in the supply shop here in town. And they have the flanges for the V8 engine. So I'm working on figuring the exhaust out. Mark is doing the intake. Mark hasn't had the best track record with engines, so I'm anxious to hear this thing run. He's a little concerned, so yeah, he wants proof of the pudding here. Okay, you brought me this thing. That's great. I appreciate it. It's in the car, but does it run? Ready? I'm ready. This engine sounded good. Mark really pulled through this time. Out of gas. Sold. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds tight. Yes! 
I redeemed myself. That's it. It's this moment to ba go bask in the sunlight. You earned it. Mark was feeling good about the engine, so I wanted to show him another special element for the front of the car. So I had these made. Check oh, this wow. out. This has been on my wish list for a long time. These are 21 inch spoke rims, but they're set up for a car. I had a guy custom make these for this vehicle. They're unique and they're all mine. Yeah, that's just awesome. I just like how freaking open they are. Oh yeah. You know, the whole oh, thing yeah. with this car was trying to show off everything. So now the side view, you're gonna look right through the rim. You know, no brakes, no nothing, just full dragster that. style. Putting this rim set on here really shows off what I was trying to accomplish. You could see the axle, you could see all the detail that the side view with the other rims was hiding. Well, that's it, man. Oh yeah. Once we got the wheels on, I wanted to move towards the front of the body. Johnny's drawing has this unique headlight detail that I'm really trying to emulate. I thought the shape here with this headlight detail was really well represented by these architectural light housings. You know, Perfect. you see them on the side of a building, Perfect. illuminating the wall. So they're, they're aluminum, they'll yep. shine out. I mean, those are perfect for the drawing. I mean, they, they look like they were made for it. Yeah, they look just like it, yeah. pretty groovy. You just gotta start somewhere. So I'm gonna cut a hole in the body and stick these things on. I need to hold these light housings on the car. They're aluminum, so I can't tackle them to the car like I would typically do. I just make a little springy round thing out of sheet metal that'll hold it, and I tack that to the car. It's just like a placeholder. Throw a couple straight edges across the top of the body, plug them in. This is just a mock-up. I wanted to put them in place and see how I feel about it. Stepping back and looking at the car, it's just not good. It's not okay. There's something terribly wrong. It's changing the whole look of the car. Once I mocked these up, I knew they were too big. I'd have to redesign the whole body to fit them, but Mark liked it. They're already got a 45 degree angle on them, so they match the drawing that Johnny did. And I said, wow, what a perfect thing to reuse to get the look that you're after. In order to show Mark the problem, I had to use a different type of envisioning tool. Eric and I created this really nice curved shape and it will basically delete it. We'll go right over it to blend in this headlight. To make this blend in, I'm gonna have to go entirely over his work headlight like that. See what happens, it's just this giant shelf. It's a big projecting uh, panel coming right. out of the body. Right. He's got his vision, he's got the drawing to consider, he's got the body that he's already created to consider, but if it's not aesthetically the way he wants it to look, then it's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna ignore it. I'm gonna work on something else. <laughs> just like I used to do with my homework in high school. Whenever I hit a wall like this, you know, it's like writer's block. The more you push it, the less you're gonna get. For now, I'm moving on to something else. He's bending some tubes, brings out his big ring roller, and we roll another tube, and I'm still scratch made and going, I don't know what you're building here. I didn't really tell Mark what I was doing. I was just making a shape here. I had a couple ideas, and really, I just wanted to flow with the existing components in the chassis. The curiosity gets the better of me, and I kind of go, okay, so what exactly are you building here? Much like a little mini uh, mini grill well, for a little exactly baby it. roadster. When you find a clue into what he's building, and then, uh, you know, you just watch him in amazement. I mean, what a brilliant idea to make it all curve like that. Perfect. On guard. I finished up the front of the grill, and Mark came up with this cool idea to put a shroud around the back. I made the shroud oversized so he could trim it to fit, and I left it up to Mark to decide where we should cut it. Whatever this dimension is, let's just follow it right from this surface, okay. and then it kind of flows. I'll trim it, we'll bolt it on, we'll call it done. Mark's a little nervous. He didn't want to draw the line, so he left it up to me to make the call. You going straight? Yeah, of course I'm straight, man. That's what I'm saying, you can't be afraid of the marker, man. We're gonna cut somewhere in here. Cut somewhere along this line. As usual, someone has a critique of my line drawing process. I want you to swoop in here so that your six well, inches Mr. is- Mr. Freaking Shy, Mr. Gun Shy. There you go, fresh straight. 
Mark is a sincere professional. <laughs> he needs detail. He's in there measuring down to the nearest umpteenth of an inch, getting a perfect trace line. He's not gonna have a cut until he's set. Now, my line, <laughs> Ian's line. Which one would you follow? So the thing is, just to further complement his efforts, I just duplicated his original line, flipped it over to the other side of the shroud, and traced it. We put it back on the car, and we accomplished exactly what we needed. That's cool. Yeah. It fills up that void, definitely. For sure. Right? Another piece to the puzzle, man. This is a pretty crazy car. Felt good to complete the grill with Mark, but there's still a lot of big issues we have to deal with. I needed to get a lot wrapped up with the rear of this car, and I wanted to make some progress before Mark got here. I walk in, and Ian's grinding away and whatever. I kind of come up there and stand beside him. It's looking a little different. Wasn't there something hanging there or something before? And, but now you got this odd shape going here. So the hole is for a fan. See, this fan here is going to go in here. Before Mark arrived, I finished up the radiator tubes. I got a bunch of mandrel bends, and I welded them in to finish the radiator design. He proceeded to pull out this radiator piece that he had construed together. So this is going to go in this puzzle piece here laid it in there and basically the name of the car suits it. I mean, Space Junkie, it is something from out of this world. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a part of a reactor or something, something weird and funky, very spacey. Looks cool, I like it. Mark got the vibe exactly. It is something that will cool water, but it's more of an art piece, flux capacitor, whatever, spaceship stuff. Mark's only got one more day to offer me, and I really need his help with something bigger than just the rear sheet metal on this car. The thing is, I'm just messing with Mark a little. I tell him, hey, we got this huge piece of plate over there in the corner. We got to get this and put it on the car. This plate is super heavy. I mean, it looks heavy. Yeah. Just looking at it, it looks heavy. My back's hurting already. I'm not really sure what we're doing with this chunk of steel, but it's something that Ian's got us to do. Look at that. The whole thing here is that I need to support that acrylic dome. I cut the flange off with Johnny so it has no strength. I'm gonna use this sheet to recreate a flange in steel that'll weld to the body. Basically, this piece of steel is going to be the supporting lip for the bubble. So even though this is quarter inch plate, you're about to see efficiency in action. Cutting disc ain't gonna do it this time. I gotta use the plasma cutter. It's a treasured asset, so I only use it when I really need it. The sheet isn't big enough to do a full perimeter around the inside of the car, so we're gonna have to do it in two pieces, and you'll see we're pushing the sheet right to the limit. It's a big ring portion we're building, and we're gonna use the majority of the surface of the sheet. He took a pipe and he just sort of measured it out inch and a quarter and he felt, okay, this is it. If we cut it wrong and if it's too short, we're starting from scratch again. Get a whole new piece of metal and nobody's gonna be very happy. I've been kind of amped on this all day. I needed Mark's assistance. You see it's a lot of heavy moving. We got it in place. I really want to see this bubble on the car. You ready, man? It's time for the test fit. I'm sure we did it perfect. So close. If I drop it, I'm running out the door. Very cool. Now she's looking like something. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. The whole thing was I haven't been able to see it until this point. It always had some piece of board in there, a couple braces. It's the first look at the vehicle, seeing through the interior. It's exactly what I hoped it would be. You know, it's looking more like the final end result here. Yeah, with the wood in there, you just didn't get the sense of it being such a no, cool thing. No, and to see through down into it and whatever, you know. Since I'm 15 years old, man, this is what I've been waiting for. 
The whole reason with splitting up a project into so many different tasks is just what we accomplish today, is a little victory, charges up the energy, we see a good positive outcome, and it allows you to continue with the struggles you're having. So buddy, I gotta hit the road. What? Yeah, <laughs> I'm stoked that I can be part of this build. The collaboration between everybody, ideas that bounce off and whatever, and Ian's creativity holds it all together. Basically, it's like a circus, and Ian's the ringleader, and we're all the clowns that are running around trying to figure out stuff to do for him. You think you just stop in for a little three-day vacation? And... Yeah, see, there's my phone right there. It's, you know, you're a busy man. Somebody wants me somewhere. <laughs> His job is done here. Mark's got to hit the road, and so do I. There's an old-school shop that might have just what I need to take this to the next level. Not Moon Eyes, the makers of spun aluminum wheel discs and a lot of other cool stuff. I called up Chico and asked him if he could set me up with a custom pair of wheel covers. Hey, how's hey, it going? Ian. How you doing? Good. Ian called me the other day and said that he's got some new projects going and uh, he wanted the moon disc. He's here today and uh, we're going to see uh, what we can do for him. Walking into their shop, I see an old school dragster. I'm building something sort of similar to this. It's not a race yeah, car. Yeah. It's like a Roth style bubble top. Oh, okay. But it's yeah. got the long wheelbase yeah. and the spoke rims on the front. Well, now that you mentioned that the bubble top, uh, let me show you something. Chico starts scratching his chin. He's like, you got to come inside, see what I got. Mark Moriarty built it. Uh, we got this thing, oh, about eight, nine years ago, I think. But uh, he built all the cars, oh. all this uh, scale model, um, the cars that uh, uh, Ed Ross built. This thing is like a snapshot of heaven. It's like it's got all the Ed Roth cars, a whole bunch showcased right in the center of the room. It's got people walking around checking them out. There's another corner of his original shop where he's setting up the plaster mold for the original outlaw body. It's really cool. Somebody took a huge amount of time to make this thing. Wow, this thing's incredible. Yeah. Maybe someday somebody will make one of these with my cars. <laughs> be all right. That'd be nice, huh? I almost forgot why I was here. I'm just geeking out on this model. It's amazing. She goes like, uh, maybe we should go into the machine shop and talk about your wheel covers. I grabbed a rim from the car and brought it in the shop. All right, let's set it over here and take a look. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, that's the uh, discs we did for uh, Tesla. A 19-inch uh, Tesla wheel. Chico says that this is like some kind of a prototype, special edition for a Tesla electric car. And I know right away, I got to have something at least that special. Mm -hmm. This is a 19, but those That's are 20s. That's a 19, yeah. These are 20 wheel, uh, and uh, it measures 21 and a half. Right. And let me see what we got. He brought out the standard disc, and that's what I thought I was coming here for, just in a 20-inch diameter. Apparently, just like me, they're always experimenting with different designs and styles. This Off disc here, uh, we did, this one we did for uh, Dodge uh, Magnum, 20, 20 inch This wheel. is a Dodge truck spare tire. <laughs> That's what these are. These are uh, Dodge it, pickup it, truck it, spare it tires. It might just pop right on there. Oh, man. Hey, perfect. <laughs> that was almost too easy. Uh -huh. Fitting that disc on the rim, it's like, this is what I need, man. Whatever it takes to make this fit, I'm on board. This is what the car is going to have. This is even more space age than those regular ones. Those are moon discs, but these are like outer space discs. Yeah, those are, we named it Saturn. That's what they're called? Yep. OK, Saturn's. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. That's the look of the car, man. Yeah. The coolest thing about the Moon Eyes facility is that they have a full machine shop. Let me show you here. Uh, this is Manny here. Oh, cool. uh, he's been working with hey, us for over going? 10 years now. This is Thanks, Ian. Okay. I always wondered how they do this. Everything starts out from a flat piece of aluminum. See, that's what it would look like if I made the wheel cover. <laughs> that's why I came yeah. here. <laughs> it was set up on that uh, mold that we have, and uh, it's from the 1940s. Apparently, nothing's changed since they invented this. You take a flat piece of aluminum, clamp it in the lathe, turn it on, and then push it into shape with this paddle. It just goes to show that sometimes the primitive machinery yields exceptional results. This thing is super low tech, and it's really all in the operator's skill 
to make this thing happen. We go from here to a, a Sunray machine and then we put our uh, uh, trademark Sunray finish on it. Oh, and that's and how it gets all the different facets. Right, I guess. yes, uh -huh. it's a brush to finish. Just like any fabrication process, you rough it out and then you finish it. You pull the disc off of the lathe, put it in some kind of polishing machine, and it's pretty fancy. All right, here's a finished product with a Sunray on it. <laughs> wow. Crazy. Uh, the difference, huh? It's perfect, man. That's the thing. I mean, literally. Yeah. That's the start, that and this that. is the finished. That's pro. See, and the process was pretty cool. It's a highly specialized thing, but mostly it's the old school dude doing something with his hands right there in front of you. Custom work is where I would really like something that's not available out there and that I want to be able to make them so that uh, you know we can say, here, we did this. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. And uh, we'll get the, um, uh, your uh, wheels disc done um, next week. Sounds good, right? yeah. Whenever you get time, just give me a call. All right, Those great. are perfect, thanks. Very good, right thank on. you. Thanks for coming by. So it looks like these wheel discs are a go. He's gonna do a couple things to make a mount. I gotta get back to the shop and finish this car. I think I figured out this headlight issue. The whole thing was I loved those original headlight bucket shapes, so I just kind of modeled the new design after that, just a little bit smaller. I really dug this slash cut opening, but, but on the outside of the car, it was just too bulky. Took some round rod and I just framed out this opening. Took some sheet, I put a little curved half cylinder in there, and then I took some round tube and just made a recess in the body. I also still like the aesthetics of the original headlights, and I wanted to incorporate them as well. With this in place, there's another idea that I want to try out. I was making a lot of cast aluminum parts in the past. Uh, this is one of them. You see, like, uh, on lowriders, on their fender skirts, a lot of times they'll have this shape. This is handmade. I had a foundry pour it for me, but uh, I took an original trim part off of a car mocked it up on a board, and then added an extra element of these deals and one more spear. So instead of two, now you got three. And it just so works out that we need three spears in the front of this car. Like everything else, I see a shape, and I'm thinking it can be cut, segmented, modified, whatever, and that's exactly the course of action with these. I made them, I'm gonna cut them apart and remake them again. The whole thing I've been doing from the start is finding parts that I like the shapes of, wherever they may be, and modifying them. And now I'm starting to find the parts that I've modified before and remodifying them to make something even weirder. So it's a whole vicious cycle. These pieces are going to be screwed on. I have to drill, tap, a whole bunch of other stuff. I just want to see them on the car. I know I could pull off a temporary tack weld, get these aluminum pieces fit up on the steel body, just enough to look at them and see if it's going to work. Right off the bat, standing and looking at this, it works. This is exactly the look I was hoping for. Sometimes you just gotta wait a couple days, you know? It just occurred to me that I had those spears, made a good call on not adding that other element with the headlight bucket in there. That's the look. I'm committing to that. Main thing on my mind right now is getting to one of the biggest fabrication elements on the car. Johnny drew this mohawk thing, and I really need to nail it. I think it's gonna set the car apart from all the other bubble tops. The main thing is trying to make it look like it belongs with the car. Well, the first step is figuring out how to draw a line in space so you can stand back and look at it. And got yet another envisioning tool. Yeah, bottom line is this is an engine hoist. You use it for lifting engines. I'm gonna use it to lift some tape. Keep your eye, this is like focus thing a weapon. Trajectory is dead on. The whole idea here is just trying to create a support structure that's adjustable. I want to stick the tape on the dome and just have something that raises it up in the back. The whole idea here is seeing what the angle of this aluminum fin is going to be. Try it right there. Yeah, see? That's all I needed. That's the thing. You use what you got. I knew I needed something adjustable in the back of the car. Engine hoist is exactly that. It ain't gonna move and it's completely adjustable, so problem solved. The angle looks perfect. I'm gonna grab some paper and make a template off of this line that the tape has created. 
My idea is that it's going to be an abbreviated version of what Johnny drew. Same flavor, just a little more dialed in for this car. I'm happy with the paper template. I'm gonna skip a couple steps and go right into the aluminum. I think I could fit this aluminum panel to the acrylic bubble and work that as the template. The whole key to this is just making it look like it flows. There's no other way to describe it. it should be like a nice swish, you know, something that looks fast and light. This is just another template. I'm going to cut a series of holes in this and then make a duplicate so it's gonna be thick, welded, finished. It's gonna look sort of like the rear fins on the car, very dimensional, but all aluminum. The whole thing with a bare metal sculpture is you're seeing the work all the way through to the end. I gotta take my time, weld this perfectly, and finish it off. Got this aluminum mohawk fin thinger, real close. The setup for welding on this is critical because I don't wanna warp it. Uh, that being, uh, I have to take a lot of preparation not to overheat the metal when I'm welding it, because it's only gonna be a metal finish. No filler, no nothing. You just see the work. Down to the final bit of sanding. Detailing out the center of these holes is pretty tedious. I got this 3M belt sander. It's like a miniature little file belt, and it works perfect for a small, confined space like these. This mohawk fin thing is the crown jewel. It's right at eye level. It's the main focal point of the car, so it's gotta look perfect. So I'm going through everything. I got the belt sander, I got a die grinder, a regular flat sander, and really that's the whole deal, just creating a surface that will be refined to a nice finish. I used to work at a foundry. We did a lot of aluminum and bronze sculptures. One of the guys that taught me is probably watching right now. So, hey Tom, pretty cool, huh? So here's the deal, it's uh, still gonna get finished out. It's still pretty scratchy looking, but that's the gist of it. Once I got the Mohawk built, I really wanted to focus on the bodywork. As I'm putting the filler on and refining all the surfaces, that is what tells the tale. How's this car gonna look? You want a mirror finish. I like the 3M Platinum Plus filler because it's super easy to work with. It's smooth. This car is such a sculpture, I gotta use all these foam blocks. You have all your profiles you'll wanna use represented on the block. So you got thinner, square, rectangle, triangle, just everything. This car really is like a nod in the direction of Ed Roth. You see it kind of has a lot of the features that his cars do. It's a very sculptured look, and the whole deal with all the body filler is I'm creating this really wild, very smooth, contoured surface, and that's really the, what all the sanding is about, making this thing look like a mirror finish. The final paint job is kind of on the back of my mind. The paint could either make it or break it. I want something that complements this wild design. You saw it with the original Space Junkie body. It wasn't that radical a concept until the paint was on it. It was just a radically chopped car. The paint freaked it out. Now we have a really radical body, <laughs> and hopefully the paint can take it even further. I got this car primered. So it's looking good. It's one thing getting this thing looking like a close to finished piece, but it's gotta drive. I had a t-shirt when I was like 15 that said normal is boring. So this car, it's gotta follow suit. It's not going to be normal. You're gonna be sitting way back. So I got this little miniature dragster steering wheel. So you're gonna be all the way back here. And there's like, there's no room for your feet to do anything. You're sitting here driving, this miniature steering wheel like a dragster, and your hand is up here like a monster cartoon car guy, but your throttle is on this lever, and when you push it, it is the brake. So your master cylinder will be on top front row center, and you're pushing it with your hand to stop and twisting it to go. I wish I could make my eyes pop out. When my friend Eric was here, he kind of threw this concept out as a challenge. This idea is pretty far out there. Uh, it has the potential to go way wrong. You don't want the car to get out of control. Choke thinking about it, but uh, I gotta make it work. 
I wanted to look cool, so I started thinking about stuff, and I had this aluminum bowling pin. <laughs> I started welding some plates to it. I thought it would be a perfect brake cylinder holder. Ever since Eric left, I've been kind of thinking about it, like how does this happen and be safe? And the answer for me is to use an actual real master cylinder from a truck and a real throttle from a motorcycle. So the master cylinder bolts right into those holes. It's half inch aluminum plate, that's very strong, just like you'd see this thing mounted on the firewall or on the frame. So that is kind of started and mocked up. I got this piece of 7 8 solid aluminum rod I picked 7 8 round because that's what a dirt bike handlebar is, diameter, and I just got a dirt bike throttle grip. And that goes right here. You dig? That's freaking cool. Sounds good in theory. The arm position is right. I think it's going to look OK. I just got to make it. So I want this rod to pass through the housing, the bowling pin that holds the master cylinder. So I'm drilling a few holes in there to create a slot. Thinking about the leverage that I'm gonna need, I drill a couple holes in the body. The lever will mount below the floor of the car, and then the master cylinder will be bolted to the top panel. So everything's looking like it's kinda gonna work, but I wanna cut this thing to size and just make sure it fits me before I build anything on it. Come on, you gotta check this out. This is gonna be epic. Quality control, I gotta just make sure everything is jiving with the higher powers and I'm just gonna show them the idea. You understand? It's pretty simple, but it works. I can see the concern in his eyes. He's got two long drool strings coming out of his cheeks and that automatically is a cause for concern. And then he's given the shifter in the eye. You're not impressed. You're concerned? It looks unsafe? Don't drool on the prime one. Prove is in the pudding. It's seeing a project halfway through. You don't know where it's going, so I'm going to prove it. Just need a little more time. He's just checking out the block sanding. He's not very impressed. It's going to get better, man. It's all a process. I got a plan. I'm on a mission. The dog is going to go do his thing. When he comes back, it's going to be on. I'm going to make a little shape here with a hole and a pin. Put it together. It's all about just getting a few tabs in place just to mock this up before I can really go forward with it. The whole thing with this is that it's aluminum. It's gonna be all finished and detailed in, similar to the Mohawk on the bubble. So just using the TIG welder, gonna fill in a lot of aluminum so that I can grind it back and it'll still be strong. Working with a client, there are parameters. There's always a budget concern, a time concern, and then there you know, whatever their idea is. I don't have any of those with this project. <laughs> it's the sky's the limit. So this is kind of the theory. It's gonna take a bunch more brackets underneath to make it function, but see, it's very much like a brake pedal in your car. There'll be a pivot you push, and this rod, which will be adjustable, pushes on the master cylinder. I'm sold on the idea of this thing, but I gotta get underneath, get all the pivots in place, and then give it a test run. I got this brake lever mounted. I pulled the engine and transmission out of the way so I could get underneath and build a structure. This thing is very much looking like a spaceship now. There's one final element that's gonna seal the deal. Well, every bubble top I've seen either has doors or the bubble opens, right? So it's as trick as that is, I just wanted to do something different. I wanted the whole car to open, like a funny car. So I put some hinges underneath in the back and I put some additional structure around the side of the body. Yeah, sort of like that. Looking at it now, you see it on all the funny cars. They got this nice chrome rod that holds the body up. I don't want that. This has got to be totally trick. One thing's for sure is that brace has got to come out. I got these air cylinders from the local spaceship surplus. There was a couple of them laying there on the shelf. I don't know what model they're from, but I think I can tailor them to fit this. The idea being, when I raise it up, the air pressure will lock it up. And when I put it down, the air pressure will lock it down. It's a dual action cylinder. The reason I went with the air cylinders is because there's already airbag suspension on the car. So there's a compressor, there's a tank, 
Right now we got a huge air leak in the fitting. All I gotta do is put two more valves in there and this thing's are operating. I know that this pivot works, but I wanna be sure that these air cylinders can support it. The body's pretty heavy. I don't know what their capacity is, so nothing to it but to try it out. Oh yeah, it totally works. Yeah, see, it's almost neutral. It's all on air. Nobody's gonna get hurt. That's cool. The whole thing here was the open air feel. <laughs> you know, you're gonna get in and out of the car. There's nothing in your way. It's pretty cool looking. That's how it'll sit at the show. Once the bubble's on, the interior's all finished out, this thing is nuts. Next time on Full Custom Garage, Master Metal Man Ian Roussel continues the wild bubble top adventure. After everything we put into this car, this could either make it or break it. So the thing is, it's not gonna be just a silver car. What's it gonna look like? I'm a little nervous, way excited. As the guys get into it, a surprise visitor arrives. I'm like, oh my God, it's Ed Ross. <laughs> Whoa, so Check dude, out what we're making. Man, this is sick. My first reaction was, are, I am I not at Ross Studios in the 1960s? Because everything that Ian does has that flavor about it. And as the build progresses, wow. Ian calls on the help of an old friend. Jack's an encyclopedia of classic ideas. What'd you do this time? I told you we were gonna change the look of the car a little bit. So. Oh, made a few subtle changes. I think know. so. He's getting crazier. <laughs> Even Hellhounds responding. This is the stand back and check it out moment. This is what we've all been waiting for.